$107 on the day after a couple of trades, one from last night and then a bunch of, um, I don't want to say recovery trades, but they, they made it back and more. So uh, we're going to talk first in this video uh, about the stock trades and then, well, two of them. I want to, well, actually, you know what? Let's do them all. Let's do them all. Fuck it. Let's do them all. Uh, because one's a break even, one's a loss, one's a win. I mean, I might as well just, just say, let's just wrap them all up into one. Uh, for the sake of the video, uh, but they are different, uh, not all in nature, but two of them, well, actually they are all different in nature. So one's a swing, one's a long, one's a short. So I mean, we're going to cover it all. Uh, let's start from the bottom. Uh, we have Robinhood, then I've got MU, and then I've got Tesla. I already recapped the NASDAQ trade that was from the last recap. And then I will recap in a future video, the S&P trade, just to kind of simplify it different accounts too. These, all three of these trades came from the same account. So I'm going to recap right now. So we have Robinhood. We made $5.24 break even. We have MU. We made about one thirty. We made, that's a win. And then we had Tesla. We lost about 69 bucks on it. So let's get in. Let's go one by one. Robinhood first $5.24. This was a swing trade. I was really actually happy to take a swing trade on Robinhood or just in general, because I'm like, oh, it's been a while since I've taken some, you know, a, a nice little swing that looked good on, on a stock daily chart and whatnot. But it just so happened to not pan out. As simple as that, really, it wasn't anything crazy. We had broken out over the level on volume, and now we have retraced. Uh, actually, we'll be getting close to my, my ultimate stop loss. I would have lost in the trade had I not gotten out earlier today, which I think was a good call to make. If we're being honest, not being honest, I mean, I, I entered the trade and I've talked about this before, uh, shortly after the breakout, I don't know if you hear the thunder, it's holy shit, freaking thunder is loud today, uh, with the stop loss under that low of the breaking candle, and then my target was $25. Now, I ended up being around a two to one risk reward, so I got filled, actually, I can tell you where I got filled, what, what, why am I trying to like make it up? Like, uh, I, I can tell you, I got filled at 2344 and I got out at 2348. Okay, so let's move this to 20. Well, actually, I had it right where it was where it was supposed to be. So it was about a two to one risk reward, 2.03, uh, meaning I'm risking one to make two and 2.03. I, I always say two to one risk reward. Just know when I say two to one risk reward, I really mean that I'm risking one to make two, not that I'm risking two to make one. Okay, I hope that was clear, or I, I feel like I, it's just easier to say uh, the way that I say it. So that's just what I do. But notice that we got so close. I mean, we legitimately, I'm not even kidding. We were within like 10 cents from my take profit. And I usually sell a couple cents shy of the of the whole number. So we hit a high of 24.88. My take profit, I legitimately am not even kidding with you, was 24.97. I think I can actually find it. I'm pretty sure I can find it. Uh, if I go to order history and I find the Robin Hood, it, it legitimately was like... Here's hood take profit modified 20 yeah 2497 oh sorry i'm in the way 2497 shit where is it? right here right here the robin hood take profit modified to 24 i mean like it's funny how it kind of works out that way but sometimes it's just how it goes what, what are you going to do i mean you know, i wish i could you know tell you exactly where i was going to you know i Looking back, oh, why don't you take partial profits? Oh, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I probably could have, but that's not how I, I operate. I, I, when I get this move, I move my stop loss to break even. So that's what I do. When I'm when I get close to my take profit, I move stop to break even, so I can't lose. And then we go from there. So uh, that's a uh, that's really the Robin Hood trade. You know, unfortunate that we didn't get the momentum. But what kind of happened in the market? I guess I should at least mention it is you had a really big thrust in general. I guess I'll go here. S&P, everything was pushing hard. And then it was like, whoa, big flip. And everything went to the Russell. So IWM was going hard. The Dow was going hard. But we've kind of like, the pressure has been applied. The, the S&P, the NASDAQ are down again and again for a couple of days in a row now. And then eventually the, the momentum was finally, the juice was kind of squeezed out of the Russell and, and the Dow and they finally are starting to give in. And so given that risk on is giving in a little bit, there's a lot, they were up a lot. So there's a lot of air to come out if they want to and still potentially set up for a higher low and then eventually go higher. Maybe that's what happens, I don't know. Uh, but you're getting that, the, the wind is coming out or the wind is dying down and 
and we're, we're seeing that like starting to sputter out. So that momentum trade seems to be kind of over for now. Might change in a couple of days, weeks, but but for now, that's kind of over. Got close. I mean, if my if, if it made a, a move of 10 more cents, I would have been out for like a $200 gain, you know, on this account. This is on a $10,000 account, by the way. All these trades were taken on, on a $10,000 account. The, the, the three that I'm talking about in this video. The last video and then the next trade recap will be on a will be on trades on a twenty five thousand dollar account. So MU next, let's cover this one. Micron MU, right? I think it's Micron. This one was really nice. I mean, I entered this one on the live trading from Thursday, July eighteenth. If you want to go back to Thursday, July eighteenth live trading video or stream, you'll see it. I drew this out, I entered it, and it worked. Simple as that. I mean, nothing crazy on this one. I had a little bit of a hunch, not that I really say that, you know, hunch trade. I had a, a little mini hunch that we would probably were going to go lower based off what I was seeing uh, in the market so far by the time we were we were live. Not that I was trading the hunch. You know, the hunch is cool. The hunch is great, but you need to have a setup that, that you know, meets the, the hunch. Like, you can't just have the hunch and just say, I'm going to short because I the, the hunch. Like, <laughs> I got to have a setup to allow me to trade off of the hunch. You know what I mean? Which at the end of the day, it's still just, it's just, it's not really trading the hunch. You're just trading the setup, but you know what I mean? So we got the, we got the move down. We also had a big move down yesterday. It's been very weak the past couple of days on MU. And you had this little like bear flag set up. And so what I played was the breakdown underneath. Now it wasn't technically low of day. I could have played low of day and it would have worked honestly the same, but I played the breakdown underneath here. I didn't get in right away. I got in a little bit after, which you can double check the entry price. The entry was at 118.91, okay? Which, yeah, I have it marked exactly. That's where I adjusted it to. So I got in a little bit after. I got in on like this candle or this candle. So I was just waiting for a little bit of confirmation and then the volume did start to kick up shortly after on this candle. And then we got the follow through and uh, it blasted through the take profit and it went for a lot more actually. But I was leaving, had to go to the doctor. So I literally left, went to the doctor and I was like, oh, take profit's been hit, I hope. Um, Cause I just left my computer. So I'm like, hopefully it hit and it did. So I came back to some gains, which is not, not a bad thing at the end of the day. Um, so that's that. The Tesla trade, I think was a really good idea to be honest with you, it just didn't work. And I, you can make the argument that, oh, well, why did you go long in a day where everything was short? Oh, you're dumbass, why did you do that? Well, okay. Let's be real. Tesla was up a lot compared to everything else at the time of this trade. And uh, yeah, so let's go back. I did not risk a lot. It was actually a very tight stop. So you'll see. Back in here, Tesla, we lost $69, dude. When I make 130 or whatever it was, and then I go and lose 69, I'll do that a million times. And with a 50% with win rate, dude, I will I will do that every day. You know, I, I, literally, I, I really, I will. Um, but, you know, obviously... You know, you don't know what you're going to get every single day. So that was a trade. And we had I, I what I thought was a really good look. Big picture on Tesla at the time. Let's go back and think. Okay, at the time, we're near high of day. We have a like diamond bust pattern. I don't even know what you want to call it. You got the diamond set up. This is, this is a diamond. This is like a certified absolute bullish or bearish pattern. I don't know which one, but it is. It's something I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I just make shit up sometimes. But no, yeah, whatever. The di diamond pattern aside, what you had was a downtrend that we were on the cusp of about to break. So I'm like, whoa, we get a setup on the cusp of a downtrend line. Not that that necessarily means anything. I'm not trading off the daily, but I'm looking at the daily to give me a little bit of confirmation. Like, yo, do we have anything on the daily that aligns with what I'm looking at on the five minute? We definitely did. So I'm like, we're playing this for the bust. If we got the bust, I thought we had room up into like the 260, you know, area. I thought that was a really good area to be looking at. And um, it just didn't work. Simple as that. Here's a 30 minute time frame. Double top high. You broke that with a little bit of elevated volume for midday. And then we just couldn't go. No thrust, no, you know, follow through. That's really all it was. So looked okay. And then I was like, mm, I don't know. And then eventually we just failed. But I could have seen this also consolidate, consolidate, and then go boom. But the market decided to go instead of. So I was essentially positioned nicely for if we did get a bounce back day this afternoon, I would have been crushed. I would have crushed it on Tesla, but we did not. I'm still waiting for the day where I like I hit like two or three. 
Usually I always like, usually I win one trade and I just like, I, I'm like, I'm not trading again. I'm done. Which is like, I think about that and like, oh, that's, that's good. But if I get a setup, I'll take another one. In this case, I, I did. So it was good. Also, by the way, high volume on the breakout. Like, it's not like I was just doing random shit. Like, this is high volume on the breakout. Tesla was the strongest stock in the day by far. It was actually up like 2 or 3%. Actually, it was up 3% on the breakout at the time. Now it's at flat. So it, it, it's gone from up 3 to flat. So pretty volatile day. So it was it was strong. Don't get me, like, I'm not playing some like weird shit. Here's the one hour time frame. You're getting, you know, you're holding up. It's been very strong, big picture. I'm like, oh man, we can be breaking out over here. We can get a run up to this, you know, volume note in the low 260s, mid 260s. That was that was the idea. So, you know, that was really all I was looking for. It just didn't work, and that's how it goes. I mean, I could have gotten all pissed, but that's why I use a stop loss. I like, I I think I thought about this today. Like, how often um, you end up, or I sometimes will like look at stuff and think like, man, you know, like back in the day when I used to be trading. And I didn't have like, I didn't think like the way I do now. I didn't track my data with Tradezilla. Plug. But also, I didn't think the way I think right now. Like, this is a trade that I would have potentially like stayed in and like bought the dip. And then gotten absolutely fucked. Like, I, I remember the days when like we, I mean, I remember the days when I used to do that shit. Holy crap. Thank God I'm not doing that anymore. It's like, because I don't care. It's like, it, it's either going to go or it's not. And I'm going to lose or I'm going to win. And then I track my data and I make adjustments if I need to based off my strategy, based off what I'm seeing. And, uh, and that's it. Keep it simple, baby. So that's the recap. I'll have another recap coming out shortly on the S&P trade. But hopefully that was helpful. I'll leave a link to trades all below. As of right now, uh, we're up around, I think this number should hold around the same. Uh, once that trade finalizes, I think it maybe is around 680. I think I like the partial profits. Maybe I lost like a dollar on the on the last um, break even part where I like stopped out break even on the, like the last piece of my position, like 5% of my position. Um, so we're up like 680 in the month. Not bad. Definitely some things I could have done better. There's some mistakes in here that I probably could I could have probably saved my ass like three to five hundred dollars in losses. Um, had I not done some stupid things, but we got another week and a half to go pretty much. And we'll see what happens. 44% win rate. Sub 50 gang, baby. Sub 50 gang. And we're profitable. See you in the next one. Peace.